All right, welcome everyone. Today's video is gonna be uh, walleye fishing in the fall time. Uh, the fall time can be really, really hard to catch walleye and also really easy. So there's a few different problem solving steps that I take to be able to break down the water and find out where the fish are at. So if you're interested in that, keep watching and also subscribe if you wanna see future walleye content. Cool, yeah, got something right here. Okay, right next to the boat. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I just noticed that. All right, uh, today it's, I'm on a, a reservoir system. It's pretty common up north, uh, especially you know if you're fishing where walleye are. Uh, it's really dark water and there's a lot of pollen, like kind of some late fall pollen that's all over the water. So the water clarity is really low right now and it's dark water anyway. Uh, some things that I like to do, uh, I'll use some uh, flashier, vibrant type baits. Uh, right, this is a, this is a, what is it, Shatterab Deep Nine. Uh, made by Rappel. It's a deeper jerk bait, but it can also be fished like a crankbait too. So I can I can reel that in like a crankbait if I really want to search for fish and hitting the bottom where a lot of these rocks are. Uh, if you've ever fished reservoirs, you know it can go from the shoreline to 20 feet back up to 10 feet in no time. So this is really good to be able to throw it out there and really feel what's going on. Also throw some traditional bass jerk baits, like some deeper square bills too along the shorelines, especially if right now if they're focused up on a lot of those yearling bait fish or uh, this reservoir in particular has a lot of crayfish in there. So a lot of times those walleye would bite crayfish type patterns. And that's why I have, uh, I have some finesse setups too. I have some traditional bass setups uh, I won't go over right now. But this is just a small little, like a Ned rig. Uh, it's an eighth ounce head on there with a weed guard and then a little floating cross. So that'll actually sit up like this. And I can kind of hop those around the rocks, especially if I'm not getting bit using uh, bigger or more exciting lures, I'll, I'll downsize to that. And a lot of times that, that's kind of like, that's kind of the last resort for me just cause I do have to fish that slower. And there's a lot of water I want to cover. So I, I definitely don't want to be doing that to start off with. So as you can see, there's a big wall on me right now. Well, right, right behind me. It goes all the way down. It's like 12 feet deep about, I don't know, 10 feet off the, off the wall or so. And that's, that's where this fish came from. Because what they do, I'm gonna, let this, I'm gonna let this one go. It has some nice blue on the fin. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. Just notice that. So what happens is they'll, they'll push up bait fish up against these, the wall. It basically has, it has enough water so you know, it can maneuver but it'll push the bait fish up against the wall. So that way the bait fish are trapped and then kind of push them up a little bit. And then the bait, they have nowhere to go. Like the bait fish have nowhere to go. So that's, that's a lot of times any predator fish, walleye, pike, bass, whatever. If you have walls like this, especially in these reservoirs, you're gonna have some steep drop-offs. Even if it's not apparent up here, even if it's just on your, your sonar, you see it's about five feet of water, then it drops down like with a, a lot of times where the natural like river channel is. Uh, that, that's a, those are really high percentage areas, especially in the fall when the fish are feeding up. Uh, so the wind's blowing this way pretty good. And the, the current actually comes this way too. It's a very small current being a reservoir, but the current comes this way. And what can, what can happen a lot of times is those fish will wait right on the, on the edge of these, almost kind of like what trout would do. So the water is blowing this way and those fish will wait right on the side. So if there's bait fish that are being blown around or just any, anything that's in that food chain, uh, we'll get blown around here. A lot of times it can be waiting, especially if you look at the wind uh, overnight, if it's consistently blowing the same way, let's say it, yesterday it was blowing from the west all day and today it's blowing from the west, they, that way you know that that wind's been blowing that way a while so those fish can be staged up. Now if the wind is shifting, you know, from east, west, north, whatever, uh, they're not gonna be as predictable, but they can still be in those areas and it's definitely worth looking. So when you get kind of close to the boat, uh, basically it doesn't matter if it's clear water, dirty water, whatever, just outside of where you can see your lure, you want to let it pause just for a second, whether you're using a crankbait or whatever it is. Uh, Cause that, a lot of times those fish will still come out of those ambush points. They've been like following the lure. So this is a little bit too close, but you probably won't be able to see the lure for as further away. You just let it sit there and sometimes those fish will come out and crush it. Not playing very hard. No, I think it's weak. Oh, yeah. I got something right here. Hit right next to the boat. What is it? Cool walleye, a decent walleye. Not huge. I just came right out of some weeds next to that, those rocks. Come here. Okay. 
Come here. Come here. I, have a, I have a net right next to me yet. I'm grabbing them. I oh, crushed that pretty good. Put some tension on that crankbait. Right, grab the old pliers. That's a good eating size walleye right there. Not too big. But no walleye would be consumed after this video. Whoa. Whew. Yeah, I, I hit him right off this point. Pretty much that's where I cast it, it came through and I hit some mush. But sometimes you can't tell if it's a pile of weeds or a walleye sometimes, the way that they fight. Right back in here. But yeah, I'm just making contact with the bottom just like you would fish a crankbait for bass. And then I'll just let it pause once in a while. And it kind of floats up, like a little bit backwards if shimmy is going up. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but it'll come up like that. A little bit of a shimmy. A lot of times you hit those rocks come up. A lot of times trees like this can hold, actually hold walleye, uh, especially with how all the sediment or pollen or whatever that is in the water. Uh, there actually might be might be a walleye in here. Most likely it's gonna be a pike or a smallmouth, but. There we go. That one, it looks like a pike. Yeah, it's a pike. You always tell within three seconds of the hook set if you got a pike or a walleye. Oh. Right there on that little finesse jig. Let that one go. Yeah, just a little eighth ounce. It's like a Ned Rig head, it's just a little skirt on there with the weed guard. And then a, a Z-Man cross, so it'll actually float up like this, like when it sits on the bottom. Let me move these weed guards back. That one hit a little bit further out, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get it back in there and See if I can get any more fish. And seeing how it's darker water and with that pollen in there, these walleye, I know a lot of people, they talk about, oh, it's a morning or a night bite, but in, the, in this dark water, they're hit, it could be 80 degrees and high noon and they'll, they'll still hit in the middle of the summertime. And there are some weeds, uh, and there are a lot of humps in this lake too. So within a small area, if you get into a good area, you can really fish like the top of those shelves and you can also fish deeper water just you know, within like the same cast. And, and there's also weeds, and that's why I use some more traditional bass tackle. I'll go over in a little bit. But a lot, if they're buried up in those weeds, especially if they're still fresh weeds, uh, those are a lot of times those are untouched fish because people, especially in big reservoirs, they're either trolling or they're throwing uh, like say live bait rigs. So if you're able to fish in those weeds, especially those weeds that are in about 10 feet of water, uh, you're gonna catch a lot of fish that are, that are unt untouched, so they're gonna hit anything. There you go, there we go. Smaller walleye. That one hit right on the paws. There's a little guy. Now, if that was a perch, that'd be a nice sized perch. So it's 15 feet right here next to this wall, like where I'm at right now. So it could be, you know, I can't see bottom next to that cliff. So I was gonna try to just come close to this rock, make contact with some sort of bottom, whether you know it's a boulder or whatever, just to, just to give a little bit of deflection. Sometimes uh, if those walleye are sitting on those rocks and that bait kind of hits and deflects weird, that could, even if they're not active, it can get a reaction strike that way. 
Let it pause. There we go. Oh, come on. I don't know if that was a fish. It felt kind of like fish. On that such short line, you don't really want to gamble that much because it's going to take off right underneath the boat. I was talking about earlier about letting the bait pause like when, when, it, like when it gets right outside of your uh, line of sight. Especially important here because it, it's straight deep. And with the, the lure, when it's going through, it's you know, vibrating, making noises, rattling. It's, it's bouncing off of the wall here. So it's actually kind of like a dinner bell going out to, to the fish. Just amplifies the, the sound of the bait. All right, so there's a point up here. I got it hooked up with the wall right here. The point up here I was using that jerk bait on. Ooh, come on. Ooh, come on. Ooh. Almost came unhooked. I'm gonna try to stay up beyond this point. There's a bunch of islands that are behind the camera. So right, right here what this gives me is, it gives me a lot of different depths to work. So I can kind of pinpoint, hopefully pretty soon, if they're sitting up on those shelves or if they're sitting deep or whatnot. Ooh, that's not bad on the right there. I was switching it pretty aggressively and, uh, oh, there we go. I mean, it's definitely not a big wally, but it's bigger than the last one. Let that one go. So they'll put, they'll push bait fish up against these walls, like up against these rock edges like this. And that's how like, basically in a pack mentality, they'll, they'll kind of ball them all up and then they just start attacking. Kind of like what dolphins do. So when I'm using a, a jerk bait or anything that I'm moving with the rod, whether you know whether that's a jig that I'm snapping up off the bottom, uh, you can have like a rip and wrap or any sort of like lipless crankbait or jerk bait. I like to have a fast gear ratio. This is an eight to eight point one to one gear ratio. Uh, that way, like say if at, at the end of like a, a jerk like that, I can hurry up and reel in the slack to be able to set the hook. Or like if you're using a rip and wrap, like at the very top. Of, of that like yo-yo action. Sometimes you can get hit, so being able to reel your slack out, especially when you use some fluorocarbon or mono is very important. All right, so as you saw, uh, just a few different uh, non-typical techniques to catch walleye. Uh, started off with the jerk bait, and it, it, went, it went okay, uh, but then uh, once, once it started heating up and I knew that they were crushing that, uh, that jerk bait, that switching over to a crankbait was it definitely pr uh, produced more results. It was able to cover water fast and also get a little bit more thump and vibration. Uh, so they're probably actively feeding right now, uh, just kind of from what I ga gathered, especially up against these high percentage areas, like up against these rock faces here. Uh, so if you if you want to see more walleye content, uh, click the subscribe button. Also comment down below uh, kind of what you're using for walleye and how you're catching them this year. Anything else? You think that's good?